Hey, y'all, and welcome back to another episode of Catch That, where we dig deep into albums, artists, and eras of R&B music and talk about it in an honest and thorough way. I am Naturally Elise, and that's my brother. JR. And we are the R&B representatives. And today, we are going to be talking to a good old friend of ours by the name of Timogen Scott. Hello, sir. Hello. How are you? Splendid. <laughs> <laughs> it's great to have you back. And before we get started, if you could just tell folks a little bit about yourself, if they didn't catch catch you the last time you graced our presence. What did I say last time? I'm from, originally from Brooklyn, New York. And uh, I love music. Great music. Classic music. And I love to sing. And I love a good chicken wing every now and again. I like that all the time. I know that's right. <laughs> that's that. The blackest show you'll see all day. <laughs> all right. <laughs> but yes. So, JR, how about you tell everybody what we're going to be talking about today and a little bit of why? Okay. So, today we will be discussing brown stones from the bottom up. Now, us knowing Timogen for a while, this guy loves this album. Brownstone is his group, for real. So y'all know he came on and talked about Jeanne, pronounced Jeanne, which was an amazing episode. That joint got some numbers. Timogen got fans, y'all, for real. Um, <laughs> and so we knew we had to have him come back and definitely talk about this album and all that good stuff. So... This is going to be a good one, y'all. We getting into this because all three of us love this album down for real. So, Timogen, starting this off, yes. how did you get introduced to Brownstone? Well, that's a thank you, JR, for the compliments and everything. So how did I get introduced to Brownstone? So this was 1994. So we were in the process of being real spoiled with the good music because we were getting a lot of good music in the 90s. Mm -hmm. First, you know, in Vogue reopened the doors for the girl group. Then we had SWV. Then we had TLC. And then Escape came out in 93. So to be quite honest, you know, we had the video shows, you know, the video souls and the MTV shows. So I'm watching, I believe it was BET or MTV. And I see these three women come up on the screen. And I'm like, honestly, I'm like, oh, okay, another group. All right. Let's see what they, you know, let's see what they're going to give us. All right. And then my first thing, I was like, oh, these women are beautiful in their own way. Nikki had the short haircut, beautiful smile, full lips. Maxi looked exotic. Mimi looked just beautiful. And they started singing, If You Love Me. Shout out, mm. to, Gordon. Shout out to Gordon Chambers. And I'm like, okay, so Nikki starts. I believe y'all have a video. Did, weren't y'all singing this acapella on one of those videos? Anyway, yes, so, yes. <laughs> so yes. I was like, oh, it's just the way she finessed the first verse. I was like, oh, okay. And then Maxie comes in and I'm like, and then that beat drops. And that was all she wrote. So I'm, I'm just sitting there and they getting it. They just, oh, oh. So what I would later find out is that that's how Brownstone did. They would get you like the first 10 seconds, all right? And then that breakdown, If You Love Me, came. The oh, I, oh, I, that. <laughs> that's one of the most, I think, for me, the most legendary breakdowns of R&B music in history. Ooh. Just my opinion. <laughs> like, like in Vogue's Never Gonna Get It, that whole yeah. breakdown, that, that whole display of vocal on If You Love Me, classic. Yeah, that... <laughs> that that every every single component of that song is a masterclass of that component. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yep. Man, talk about a song coming together. Word. Voices. Oh, like Voltron. Vo yeah. yeah, voices. I was like, yeah. okay. And I, I said to myself, I'm like, okay, this is cool. I just wonder if they could do it live. You know, I'm like, yeah, they sound good on the record. 
and then Video Soul, everybody can see it on YouTube now, they sat in them stools and said, we're going to show you. Mm-hmm. And with right. Brian Tom, I jokingly say, when they sing, all you see is teeth, tongue, and mics, because they don't play. <laughs> you know, they go in. That's all you see. They ain't trying to, they're, beautiful, they're beautiful women, but they ain't trying to be cute. They trying to get up there and, and say, yo, we're going to sing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, yeah. And then that's when you fell in love with them. I oh. fell in love. Like, oh, these girls are singing from their pinky toes. Like, they weren't trying to be cute and sing cutesy and do all the tricks. They were just singing from the heart. You could feel that thing. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Thank you, Gordon Chambers and Nikki, for writing that. We're going to yeah. get there. We're uh-huh. going to get there. <laughs> yep. So, you know what? When, um, Brownstone, when Brownstone came out, I had... I didn't have it like the first few weeks or whatever it came out because I think I got it like I seem to remember I got it like from like Columbia House or something like that. Columbia House. Yep. You got twelve <laughs> CDs for a penny. I'm pretty sure it was one of them. In different and, um, So I didn't get it like right when it came out, but 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 not but not too long after. Uh, you know, if you love me, but it was like love at first listen. Mm-hmm. Like just the. The intro, like before you even get to the song, song, like, like what? Yeah. What's <laughs> yeah, what's going on here? Exactly. Mm-hmm. 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 So, uh, I got on them because I love basketball, and everybody oh. know that I'm a diehard Nick fan. Yeah. So I had my Super Nintendo, and I had NBA jams. Wow. Yes. So on NBA jams, they used to play these mu this music. This is '94, right? Mm-hmm. So I was hearing this song, but I didn't know who they were. And mm-hmm. it was past the loving. Mm-hmm. And I heard this. And when I heard it, the first thing I thought was I heard that Dr. Dre G Funk type of joint to it. So I was like, oh, all right. So mind you, I'm not paying too much attention to it but I'm just like all right whatever but then it was like the songs that came after it right Mm -hmm. and then Mm -hmm. they had like um CC in the music factory you want to get funky Mm. um you had um Joe uh Joe what is their name Joe Public Live and Learn Oh, yeah. that is a song. That That is a song right there. Okay. (laughs) Is that the one you see how she leaped up? Y'all wait for that moment. Uh, so then, um, oh, oh, they are oh. dancing on the bridge. Oh, that was that was a, that was yeah, that was a fun, that was a fun song. Yeah. And see, I remember. So then they had um, Gloria Estefan turn the beat around her version. Okay. And then they ended it with Luther ain't no stopping us now. Ooh. So that was on that. So I used to hear that a lot. So then when I found out who the girls was. Y'all, I was like, oh, Brownstone, that's who they are. I didn't know, you know what I'm saying? Because, again, you had SWV at the time, who was my girls. Mm-hmm. And you had TLC, you had In Vogue, they was rocking. You had other girl groups as well, you know what yeah. I'm saying? And then, If You Love Me, and I saw that on Video Soul. And I said, oh, them girls is bad. They are no- like, oh, they bad. I was like, yeah. they bad. And I was like, you, Timothy, I was like, can they do this shit live? Like, <laughs> can they really do this shit live? And then when they sat on them stools and Nikki wore that oversized bubble coat. Yes. And they sat there and you just saw the mics was like right here and they was <laughs> blowing. I was like, they are, they are, they are damn choir. Just three of them. And yeah. they sound like this. I was like, yep. yeah, they dope. And from that moment, I was like, yo, I'm a fan. They had yep. me from when they did it live. Yes. I wonder if the girls can do that now. But they and how. And how and how the song see so shady? How the song um comes in, it makes me think of um you know like involved for a uh, hold on mm-hmm. like of that coming in, so it already catches like oh okay. Mm-hmm. I don't wanna rain up right yeah 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 yeah. And, and singing so- it with such like care, they're not like. They're, they're controlling f- the song. The song is not like it's just a. They're finessing it. Yes. yes. They finessing that thing. They, they is. They is. 
Mm. And that's what, and, and like they, they slowly bring you in. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's like, we're going to give, you know what I'm saying? How Nikki just comes in and just, she gliding. And then you, like, they come in together and then that beat drops. To Done. Like your mind and the light and the dog, if you love me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was a rap, and that beat coming, you can't help but to rock to it. Yeah, and that shit still hits now. Like what? You got to turn it up. That thing. Whew. Yeah, yeah. That song has no expiration date on it. No, whatsoever. It's if you if you it just appeals on so many different levels. Like Ooh. If, if you, you need a, a vocal, 90s mix, if, if you need a vocal coach, listen to them and sing with them. I'm telling you, they will they will show you how to breathe. I promise you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <look. laughs> okay. Okay. All if right. you got a 90s mix and if you love me ain't on there, then something wrong. I, I don't think I've ever heard one with it not on it. That, yeah. That song does not have a legacy problem. <laughs> Word. Right. You got Word. a point there, girl. It's on it. Yeah, I guarantee you. You got a Untouchables point. You did that, right? Point. Untouchables did that. What? The Untouchables, they produced that, right? What? If you love me? Yeah. No, was that's it Dave Paul. Oh, that's right. Yeah, Dave Paul for, for Untouchables. Oh, okay, okay, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I know. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I mean, shit, shit. Since we, I mean, since that's how clearly we all became fans for real, for real, like the fan for real, for real. I like, you know, y'all, that is my favorite Dave Hall production. Really? And now everybody know he did You Remind Me with Mary. Yep. He did all that other stuff. Yeah. That, if That's you love that. me, is my favorite production yeah. from Dave Hall. Yes. Period. Yes. I'm, I wish you How Lee said it's not are. even close. Huh? And <laughs> it's not even close. Oh. He, he pulling my words. I had to do it. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm an influencer. <laughs> you you are big time. Oh, big time. <laughs> influencer of one. <laughs> <laughs> <I'll take it. laughs> so all right. So, so Timogen, when you heard the whole album in full, ooh, right? Because once you got the album, yeah. uh huh. And once you got the album and you heard the joint in full. Was you like what? What was your first like first Thanks. listen? How did it feel? So okay, so I would go visit my grand. I know Jr. You could relate to this. I I, okay. I went to go visit my grandparents as I know, I did a lot young, when I was younger in Connecticut. So you know I had my disc man and we made a little trip to Kmart and I said okay, let me find a CD I could play on the way for on the Peter Pan bus down to the New York City. You better Peter but, Pan. You better. You listen. better. Listen, they, they were a little more plush than the great. Okay. So anyway, <laughs> you know, they had the tinted windows. Okay. So oh. anyway. All right. So I got their album. And then so when how did I feel? I was like, oh, the, these women are sophisticated. They were youthful, but there was a sophistication. Like I could listen to it, but then my moms could listen to it, or my older sister or brother could listen to it. And they'd be like, we like this because they had a sophistication to them. No shade to the other girl groups, but right. they were not like 100% youthful. They were like, no, we're here to sing. We are here to sing for y'all. And the music was, the music, the lyrics were grown. Yeah. But yes. not grown fast, grown like adult. Yes. yes. Like whole new world. <laughs> yeah. That's true. Yes. That's true. That's true. Yeah. Yes. The, the song ain't like, oh, if if you like me, tell me no. If you want me, say it. Like there. Do it. Show it and prove it. Nikki yeah. was writing that the help. They won't they won't they ask they. him for a fucking thing. They were, no, this is what I require. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. Party mm -hmm. with me. Oh, we're gonna get we're gonna get Oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah. So, so, oh, okay. we can jump in. We could jump right in since you said it. Okay, so how do you feel? Okay, party with me, y'all. That's how they opened the album. Yes. How do I feel about that? Oh, yeah, go ahead. You, you did. <laughs> what got me? Okay, so I have to say this to the people watching. 
Brownstone is a vocal group, right? They they reminded me of a '90s LaBelle and Perry Sisters. They have like a combination of the two. They were like our LaBelle. So when I hear "Party with Me," I was like, okay, you know, the beat, the, the nice little beat came in, and Nikki comes out the punch and does like, oh, she just keeps herself punching in, in in the ears with her with her her voice. But what really, ooh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But the part I love, and I was like, oh, these girls ain't playing. She's like, I want the kind of love that drives me crazy, crazy. And I'm just like, and I'm like, oh. <laughs> oh, that's my part right there, yo. Oh. I was like, okay. <laughs> listen, and, listen. I, okay, these girls, I said, all right. It's on. It's on. And, uh, and you know, George G-Man, um, G-Man blessed them with this joint, right? Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. he did it. And what's so crazy, he was just, and y'all talking about vocals, he just came off of doing In Vogue's Runaway Love. Ooh. I love so, that. You, right. So it's like he created this especially after coming off them vocals yes and they do this yes he was like look we can't play with it that's what i feel like he was like yo we can't play with it so that's yeah. why he like we gonna smooth you in but that part when you said a big strong baby, yeah baby, he was yeah. like yes <laughs> we gonna sound like a motherfucking choir like for real for real yo seven to nine, oh that's my that like the song was great, but I was just like that part and that and I'm just like okay, I right, y'all okay. Cause ain't Nikki because she said um her mother listened to a lot of jazz, right? Yes, and she was like that was kind of more of her influence there. So you can see there's a lot of jazz flavors all over this album, and her just doing oh, yeah. that they scatting. Like, yeah. you know what I mean? And she, her influences is all up in this record. You know what I mean? I keep that Monica, uh, well, not Ma Monica, AKA Mimi. She liked jazz too, I, I read somewhere. So oh, I, okay. Yeah, she okay. was into jazz, but she left the group. But yeah, she she started doing the whole jazz thing. So. Oh, yeah, yeah you can feel the jazz all over this record. Like, mm -hmm. like, but yeah, party with me. They saying, come party with us. Mm -hmm. They say, come party with these vocals. That's what they say. Right. Yeah. Hold me, squeeze me, squeeze me tight. Uh, let's make love all day and night. Yes. Ooh. Mm -hmm. So I, I, I do like this song a lot. Yes. But I wanted the next song to open the album. Absolutely. I wanted that first. I felt like party with me could have segue like from some slower things into the faster things. Like that would have been a bit. Like I think it. Need to be on the album. I like it, but great fine, baby. 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 Great fine. Great fine. Listen. <laughs> A song. The choir of Brownstone is on Front Street on this record. Straight. Period. Track two into now. This is listening. This is track two. So I'm, I'm like, dun, dun, and I'm like, and they smooth you in again. Uh, and they go, boy, I know. I, I know the day, my. And I'm just like, I'm getting on the day, I love. And I'm just like, yo, who was singing like that? <laughs> oh. That jazzy flavor once again. Yes. <laughs> the quiet song, yes. But it still got a bounce to it, though. Yes. Like you said, there you go, since it got that body roll, but you can still. And then, of course, they, they getting you. They like this. And they just, yeah. they getting you. This is. You know my. Huh? Go ahead. I was saying this is when, to me, this is when I was like, yo, they sound like LaBelle. Yeah. Me. And I was like, this is the record when I was like, it reminded me, because my favorite song from LaBelle is, is, is It a Shame. They remind me of that on this record. Majorly. That, 
And then when they did that joint live on video, so that Woo! I posted on my Instagram. That intro? Babe. I see ah! that. Yes. I see that live on my television screen. Oh. Me too. Listen. The Who's singing like that, y'all? You did me wrong. You <laughs> told me lie. <laughs> baby, no, no. I don't have a song. I only have no favorite part. No, the whole, I don't. The whole thing is my favorite part. I love Mimi's me. part. Mimi's me, part. Mimi, me. Mimi, me, me, yes. That was very jazz. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> All I really need is your loving. Yes. Yeah. Come on, Jack. <laughs> Never do something that I catch up to ya. You did it wrong. That's so tragic. That I catch up to ya. It's jazz slash like theater, theater like very theater. Yes, it's yeah. very dramatic. Clearly, all three of us will love it. Huh? Catch it all. <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. Oh yeah, okay. <laughs> yeah, Nikki, Nikki brought that. They brought uh, that. Cause it, she, her pen is basically on the whole damn album, ain't it? Yep, it's between the three. It's all. It's like between her and the three of them, and then yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh my god, yeah. The, oh, I agree. what? I have to. I have to say this for the for the you know people who saying if you listen closely because I was one, I was one of them folks I'm sure you all were too where mm -hmm. I would turn up the volume when the song was fading to hear that last bit mm -hmm. the way that song ends if you listen carefully okay the, there's the soprano harmony line right but then Mimi is singing on top of yes the, uh, and I'm like yo and when it stops like you can hear her. You can still hear her because they got to stop the music and Mimi is still ending her note. Yes. Yep. Oh, we oh my God. Like, for real though, my I studied them. I studied oh, my God. They were my, like, yo, I studied those girls. Like, the way they, listen, no girl group was singing like that at the no, time. No, none. Nobody. They, yeah. Um, <laughs> the they were the choir of the brownstone mass choir for real. Yeah. Like <laughs> they were bringing straight church and throat, like for real. Yeah. Like that was it, y'all. Like, nobody throat, was teeth, it. tongue, teeth and tongue. Just, <laughs> just getting it. Just getting it. Yes, yes. Yeah. Oh my God, yo. Who I love that song. <laughs> God, I love that record. And they all did that one too. Well, yeah, the untouchable. Yeah, he mm -hmm. did that one too. He did their hits for real. Yeah. For yeah. real. Yeah. Oh. So we already went into If You Love Me. Clearly, we went in for that. Yes. Mm -hmm. But I do love the remix. The remix is one of my favorite 90s remixes with Craig Mack. I love it. Oh, yeah. If you love me, say it's just me. Da -da 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 -da. I yeah. love it. I love it. I yeah. love the video. It's so, it's so 90s. It's so in it. it John A was in it. Uh Keith Murray. Keith, Keith Murray, Murray. Murray was in it. Um Dave Hollister was in it. Um, because him and Nikki is kind of grooving, you know what I'm saying? Together. Yeah. That just yo, that video is so ill. It's one of my favorite remixes of the 90s, period. Yeah. Like, I love it. I love yeah. it. Yes. They killed that. They killed that. They they killed that's why If You Love Me is a signature record. And I mean, it will never die. Like y'all said, no. it will never die. Like, I can yep. listen to that joint right now and just blast the shit out yep. of that joint. Like, yep. uh, and y'all know, back in the day, remixes, the singers would re-sing the lead. Would so re-sing the lead. Say that they again, y'all. Say that again. Say that they again. They didn't up, making them sound like mini, mini mouth. They yes. re-sang the lead. Imogen, you already done dropped about two gems already. We ain't even damn near halfway to album, for real. <laughs> Shout out to Nikki and Maxie and Mimi for doing that. Like, they were like, no, we're going to go in there. We'll do it again. We're going we gonna to rock with the vibe of this. Yes. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Love yeah. that record. If you yeah. love me, y'all. If you don't know that record, I don't, and you're watching the, the R&B representing something wrong. 
Because we yeah. even gave you a little medley of it our damn self on the line. <laughs> and Elise did her. She went deep. <laughs> she went deep on it. I ain't doing it again. I'm not. No. Nah, no, nah. Nah. Mm -mm. Do it again, at least. Mm -mm. I'm not gonna give you the satisfaction. I know that's right. You got to pay. I know that's right. I oh. don't wanna <laughs> <laughs> do maxi part. That you are not ready to settle down. But mm -hmm. if you want my heart, then it's time that you start to act like you're mine in the light of the dark. If you love me, say it. <laughs> I'm thank cutting all this shit out. Thank you, thank you. We Girl, appreciate it. How about the same? Because they are vocal. They're just giving vocals, so whatever. Yes, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Classic record, classic record. Yes. All right, so we go into the next joint, Sometimes Dancing. Yes. I what? like it. You didn't like it? No, I no, love no, this you record. go ahead. I was oh. trying to interrupt you. No, no, I love this record. But yeah, you go ahead because I, I got a little story with mine. No, I just loved it. It's one of my mom's favorites too. But I, you know, come and find out Maxi was from, may she rest in peace. She was from Guyana. So I think that Ooh. was the influence of that. That was dope. I didn't know that. Yeah, she's from, she's Guy, she was Guyanese. Mm -hmm. ah. Guyana. So I think her influence with that came came into that song. I'm not sure, but yeah. But my favorite part of that song is the breakdown. Yep. make you go crazy. They break they break into the harmony. Yo study, yo study, he studied them. I was like, oh shit. <laughs> <laughs> But you know, there was kind of a sprinkle of that sound through R and B during that time because that's when you had like that's when like Mac Diana King was out and Mac you know. Cobra, Shaba, yep. Snow, yeah. Patra. Yeah. You had Patra. You had Snow. <laughs> that you was real cute. Oh, that was I'm real cute. Cute. That was real cute. That was real cute. That was there. <laughs> mm hmm. It was popular. I kind of was digging it a little bit. I was like, okay, okay. No, it was nice. Um, <laughs> you know, I I I really love sometimes dance. It's a very uh, it's, it's a very pleasant. It's pleasant. Very. So I mean that in the best way possible. Like it's very, very pleasant. And and my story for it is that at least the first time you stayed at my house, and uh when I was dropping you off, because I think we were playing Brownstone, right? And we was playing while I was dropping you off. And uh, when you got out, If You Love Me was like damn at the end or whatever, right? And when I was pulling off, then sometimes dancing came on. And I'm driving down, and I was like, oh my God, I miss her already. Oh! Mm. I was like, I miss her already. Like, because it's such a pleasant song. And then this was the first time Elise stayed. And I took her back to, uh, um, you went to PG at what's the name house. And, yeah. and I was just like, and it played, and it's such a happy song. And I was like, yo, I miss Elise. Like, I miss her already. Yeah. So I was just like, if any time I think about that song, I think about when she was here and me and her, like, me and Elise really got lit. When she got here, that's why I can't make no more drinks anymore for her. Uh, but <laughs> there's a reason I'm a professional bartender, and he is. Yes, a and yeah, when she come, I'm not. I can't even make my own drink. She told me I can't even do that either. But and I smiled, and I was like, "Oh my god, I miss her!" And then I just started blasting it, and I just started smiling. And I was like, "I miss her." So yeah. when I think about sometimes dancing, I think about Elise. I swear, I think about her. I did it's not know. I did not know that, Julia. I did not. I did not. I was waiting to this. That's why I, I was waiting to this. Yeah. It's, it's sneaky. Warm breeze. It's like a warm breeze, that song. Like it warm... is. And that's what she is. And that's what Elise is. It's like she's a warm breeze. With and a rum. That song reminds me of her. It's a feel good record. Like anytime that she's coming, 
and I know she's coming, I'll play that song <laughs> before <laughs> she come to the house. I might as well she give her ass a key. But uh, <laughs> when she comes to the house, and I make sure I play that to get in that spirit, like, oh, Lisa's is coming, she's coming. Like, I love she's that great. record. I love it. And it makes me think about uh, her. She, so, yeah. uh, a warm breeze with a rum punch. <laughs> okay. Irie, Irie, yes. Irie, Irie. <laughs> Jay would be real happy to see me till I start cussing him out, Dennis. There she go. There she go. I show, there she go. you go, Timmy, then I'll be like, here she go. Here, here she, she go. go. Here she go. Here she go. <laughs> it used to only take about four or five minutes. Because so. <laughs> I ask her something crazy. That's what that is. Just give us. Oil. Get us that, that's oil. exactly what it is, Timothy. And I'll be like, so Elise, what you want to eat tonight? And she'll be like, seafood. Now, boy. JR, what else would I want to eat? Yeah. Hip hop chicken, hip hop chicken, or hoppity hop chicken, or whatever it's called. <laughs> <laughs> She'll be like, go get our sweet food boy. Thank you. <laughs> uh, wow, right. I wish she'd stop asking. But yes. So I but love yeah, that record. That, that's that's that. Sometimes dancing is such a feel good record. So yeah. So yes, you never knew that. So now you know it, and it's on record. So the next song, I'm just gonna say the word, the the song title, and I'm just gonna pass it over to Elise because okay. um, this thing there, I can't tell you why. Baby. <laughs> Sorry, Ali. Go ahead. <laughs> Elise, are you there? <laughs> oh, I'm here. Huh? If you ever, our viewers, go and listen to I Can't Tell You Why, a cappella. Oh. And then, then I won't have to say nothing because you'll understand. It's God. It's Jesus. just God. E Eagles who? I didn't even know it was a cover. I, I did. I, I did. Oh. I knew right away. You know how I knew? Because I heard the song for the first time and I knew all the words. That's and how mine went. went. I yep. was singing, singing the whole song and I was like, oh, wait, wait, wait. That must be a cover if I know every word. That's the first time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So Maybe. yeah, so we didn't know. So you didn't know. I didn't know. I just I just heard the vocal. And, and there's two different versions, as everyone everyone knows. Yeah. On Maxi, and then in the video version, it's Nikki. Either one is fine. But yeah, just there, the way they the, the vocal or the vocal arrangement. Just that whole, oh my God, my God. And that's what it was with me because, like Elise said, I already knew it because y'all know my mom knows every freaking thing. And, you know, she listens to the Carpenters and stuff and yes. James Taylor and the Eagles and that. So I knew these words and I was like, but it was the way they were doing it vocally compared to what the Eagles was doing musically. That was the difference. Yes. And I was sitting there like, I know these words, but it wasn't sung like that. <laughs> you know no. Like, don't get me wrong, Timothy from the Eagles, he floated on it. Like, I ain't even gonna stunt. But what the girls did, they made you like, like now, hey, if you're an Eagles fan here, sorry, but that song belongs to Brownstone. I'm sorry. That's Absolutely. theirs. Like, they ate that song to shreds. And then to have Troy Taylor come in and then them two just tell you why like they just going back and forth with each other and Maxie and him just it's yeah. like it's like praise and worship you know yeah. for real like yeah. absolutely they ate that man they ate that like I said the Eagles was more musical Brownstone was more vocal the vocals. It's the vocals. Yeah. They, oh, my God. And when I heard the acapella with no music. Mm-hmm. They did a lot of too. Yeah. 
Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Uh, the Apollo, even because y'all know if you suck, it don't even matter if you a big, if you whack, the Apollo gonna let you know you whack. Yeah. They got up on their feet and was clapping for Brownstone at the end of that. Sitting on stools again, killing it. Here they go. Straight stools. Yes. Yo, you see a group room stools come out? <laughs> Get ready. Cause they they wasn't they wasn't they wasn't in like the baggy uh you know jackets that they were wearing on video soul on yeah. those food. Now they were wearing like blazers and blazers. Listen and sitting on them stools and singing down. And the new Tina led. Tina, yes, she did. And yes. I'm telling you that everybody in the audience just got up and clapped. Like, yes. if you you yo, <laughs> they they weren't singing like nobody. Like for real. They, like you, yeah. you look. Mm -mm, mm -mm. Yep. And for three yeah, of them to sound like way they did, man, listen. And then, then, you know, you know, then they had to black it and black it up with the um, I can't tell you. Oh, wow. Right. Can't tell. I, like, that came out of nowhere because you're just like, oh, no, you got my kid. And all of a sudden, you finger snapping, snapping like, what? Yeah. Uh, da, 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 da. It's on you, too. Right. <laughs> like Tim just said, they had to put the black in it. They had to add an extra black. Some some grits and cheese and some, some steak yeah. sausage. Yeah, <laughs> brown stone, brown stone, black stone, brown uh, liquor. Yep. Talk brown about liquor. it. Mm hmm. Some gravy. That's what I should have had for this episode. Brown liquor. Nah. <laughs> so, like, uh, screw y'all. <laughs> <laughs> I tried. <laughs> it's just. It's definitely in my top favorite covers of a song. Like, Absolutely. Like way up high. Absolutely. But wasn't everybody in the 90s doing a cover and Absolutely. eating that shit up? Yeah. Because one of my favorites, damn, Jeanne, took a damn Billy Joel. It was like, why not? Oh. And that shit black as a motherfucker. That's what I'm saying. Shit black. People were doing covers back then that they made their own and you forgot about the original. That's how it's supposed to be. Yes. Ugh. I'm like, today. But yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right, you did it before me. <laughs> yeah. It, it, yeah it was, the 90s did have a lot of great covers. Listen. It was the and the women. Yeah. Y'all, the 90s was magical. It was magic, man. It was really the last year of like the last decade of like real the real music. Yep, and then we got that little resurgence in two thousand with a everybody. Little, right, a, a little resurgence. Yes, you know, and at least did uh, it was a little more than little. It's a little more than little. I like, give you know yeah. what? I give yeah, it. Not, you didn't give it, it. It was a big. It was. A big movement and and the music is still enduring so yeah in the yeah. 2000s it was yeah, fucking huge you're right you're it right you're right you're right yeah, you're right you're right at least you're right girl mm -hmm. thank you <laughs> i love it thank you <laughs> right right academy thanks you but yeah <laughs> oh i want that i want that whatever it, the, oh, yeah you want it um yeah. Good to know. Um, and Sarita too. I ain't forget. No. Um, so <laughs> what time she gonna tell me though? Oh look. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I was like, good to know. <laughs> I told you before now. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we go to "Don't Cry for Me, Baby." Now. For me, this is Brownstone's Isn't It a Shame? Because of the, again, yeah. the well, yep. arrangement. That break, that vamp at the end, and the lyrics, and the way Maxie and Nikki are singing g -g 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 on this record. This it's song just, is, is too good. It's, too, it's, it's so <sighs> 
This yeah. song makes you quiet because it's like, what do you say to it? Like, you just this listen. song say, "Don't cry for me." This song made me cry damn near every time I play that book. It hits. It hits somewhere. I'm like, you told me not to cry, but you lied. <laughs> yeah. It's the it's the melody, it's the chorus, it's the emotion, it's the breakdown at the end, it's all of it, all of it. The lyric, chess, yeah, like, that shit reverberates through like your whole nervous system. Like it's that's all the experience. Yeah, you and, know, I um when with this song, I listen to this, and then I listen to. Um, CC Winans, don't cry. Mm. And then I ended with Whitney's "Don't Cry." Oh, she did that joint live at something. But I took yeah. the MP3 and I put that joint on my computer. Yes. And anytime I listen to them three, I'll be sobbing, y'all. Like you, you can't help it. And I'm like, you don't even know who to start with. So most of the time, I actually start with CC "Don't Cry." Yeah. And then I go to Whitney's, and then I end with Brownstone. Yeah, and Brownstone just hits you somewhere. It yeah. hits you so it hits you in your chest, and you be yeah. like, "Oh, yeah. damn!" They, like they going for blood. They going for blood at the end. Like we gonna show y'all what we could do. Hold on, that's yeah. some vocal assassin for your ass. Period. Period. And shout out to Darren from the Untouchables. The Untouchables, man, they blessed them girls on it because he did um anything for you for intro. Oh, mm -hmm. okay. okay. And you can tell that. anything for you with uh, Kenny was sounding very choir ish. Ah, so he knew he had three girls in the group that could. Nope, mm -mm. nope, I'm not gonna do it. Nope. What nope. three girls in the group that could what? Three girls in the group that actually can do that. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. well, at, least, at least know exactly what I meant. But <laughs> ain't nobody yeah. telling you, Jr. Yeah. <laughs> but yes, but yes, this song, man. Listen, yeah, amazing song. Amazing. Uh oh. Uh oh. Uh oh. Uh-oh, so we go to uh, Pass the Loving. Pass the Loving, baby. Hey, baby. Well, can I take that? Yeah. Girl, you don't get the, like, Parliament Funkadelic G flavor vibe. I wish y'all, I, wish I, I mean, I think you could see yourself on camera. Did you know how crazy you just looked this sound? Oh, wow. 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 <laughs> That's song is, I don't understand. But she was, they were trying to be, they were trying to be freaky though, but try to do it in a, like play, that? In a playful way. Like it's, like if you're not trying to be Adina Howard before freak like me. Yeah. I need a brother with a big strong hand. Yeah. It ain't the lyrics. It ain't the, no, the lyrics, I'm fine with that. Fine with the lyrics. Uh -huh. Oh, it's the production for you. I don't like the way it's singing. It's just, it's just way too. It's just like, yeah. it's all yeah. like a tax me. I have no problem with no. They ain't gonna be. They sing perfectly the whole album, but like, I just don't like that. I don't like that for nobody. So is it? And that's the and that's why there's a chunk of '90s music that I just I. I just don't touch it. I just leave it where it is. Because I don't like it. Yeah. Is it, is the vocals too hard? It's yes. Just a, yes. Oh, okay. And, and I don't like that from nobody. That's what I like about it. Like, they just, they were in, they were in your, call me up till I was eight to tell me that I'm dating going on my own. I got men knows that it's wrong. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> And they come, what? In the harmonies? Come and then, 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 then Nikki, little cute little rap, though. Pass the love and then the kiss. Now, the JR, you know how much. You got it going on from the bus to the, the bone. bone. 
over now around stone. I know that sooner or very soon it's going to be me. Right. Right, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. No, right, go ahead. Go ahead, Elise. Tell us how I, you don't like nobody rap from a female. I hate group. it here. I really hate it here. But um, no, I don't like the rap. I don't like rap nine rappers rapping on a song. I barely like a, a real rapper on a song. Okay. I only marginally like that, but I really if you ain't a rapper and you I think my one exception, I, I let I let Bobby and Ralph they they got it. But it, otherwise I can't. Wow. How about DJ? Did you like that? Huh? With the and hey Mr. DJ where they had the rap in it. That was fine, and that was an actual rapper. Oh, okay. Okay. All right, touche. All right, man. All right. And they were singing smooth on it. I just, it's 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 a taste thing. It's my, it's it's because I mean, and obviously, at least it, she's right because she's and she doesn't change up either because. She's like that with me when I do SWVs in the house. She can't stand it. And Coco's <laughs> rap. I love Coco's rap. She can't stand it. Like, yeah. Even it's across say, the board. I don't discriminate. Right. Like, TLC did it with the way that I liked them. Mm hmm. You know, In Vogue did it with. Um, and ain't over to the fat lady saying. Yeah. I like that song too. I do too. You know what? Right. Oh, see the consistency. With you. See the consistency. I like. It's just like I said. It's just a personal taste thing for me. I just it it don't make me hype. It made me feel yelled at. Like I just feel but that was uh, that was like that had that must have been like the '90s formula. Oh, you have to rap. You got to put a rap in there. No, it was. Right. Oh no, that was that was it. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> got to put a rap in there. Uh, yeah. So. After Past the Love, because this was the first single, y'all, we go into The Fruit of Life. Another warm breeze type of song. I yeah. love this. This is one of my favorites on the album, for real. So it's just thick. Because, and... uh, it's just so, it's just, it's like you could take out a, a glass of wine. You ain't got to put vodka in it. But it's just a whole, it's a wine. And then. James Strong is playing the hell out of that bass because mm -hmm. he did the same thing on Tony's um, uh, um, Seven Whole Days. Uh -huh. And he did that on the get, y'all know the ghetto vibe mix. No. Yeah, listen, go listen to the ghetto vibe mix. Yeah, I'm I probably tell you. Before? Yeah, that, yeah, yeah. That mm -hmm. joint, the way he playing on that, like, and George G Man blessed them with Fruit of Life again. It was very nineties. Like, and a I have some, and I have this to say, and I, that's why I asked Elise about a song off the second album. And at first, she said that she liked it, and then she said no. But I always thought this was part one to me of Kiss and Tell. I thought Past the Loving, for Kiss and Tell, it was like the answer to Past the Loving. Yes. Did I not say that to you, JR? You did. Did I not? Yes, you did. Okay. That's all. You did. You did. Kiss was sassy. I like I liked it, but it was like that same sort of vibe. I'm, I was just laughing because that's the first thing I said. Because JR tried to he tried to pitch that at me and I was like. I was like, it's the past the lesson. <laughs> yeah. Well, okay. Well, then, well, on this record. <laughs> catch me out here slipping, but I don't. Okay. When Nikki does that, woohoo, at the end, and she laughs. That, oh. to me, I, I, yeah. And she laughs at the end. I love that part because it's like you can tell they're having fun and they leave it in. You know what I'm saying? It kind of reminds me of what Brian did with, uh, Coco at the end of I'm so into you and she's laughing. Yeah. And you tap it in to fit you can feel the the realness. They having a good time. And when Nikki does that and laugh, it takes me back there. So it's just so free. And the song is so free to me. I love it. It has a like a love's taking over type of vibe kind of Okay. Issue. Okay. Like, like yeah. oh, oh, yeah. oh they oh, just yeah. 
That's a good comparison, actually. Very yeah. good comparison. Yeah. I, I can agree to that. Mm -hmm. I agree to that since y'all shit it on mine, but okay. And so then I told JR too before we came on. <laughs> I told him that past eleven also angers me because oh. it's in between uh -oh. two really fucking amazing songs. And like they told me not to cry, but but then I cried because I had to hear past eleven. And then I needed fruit of life to bring me back, to resuscitate me. I think that was the thing. Like, okay, we're gonna we're gonna pick up the pace just a little bit, and then we're gonna bring them back to the sultry. I, I can agree to that. So I'm I, I'm glad they fed me and gave me the fruit of life because there was no love passing for you. No, and I did cry for them. Okay. <laughs> well, you got the fruit of life, so it brought you back. I do, I love I love that song, Fruit of Life. Yeah, yeah. Just, yeah. Mm. Mm -hmm. So we go to True to Me. Now you talk about jazz influence. That was all. That vocal was straight jazz. The even their harmonies. That was very very jazz. Come on, try to go ahead. I'm just saying. You know that one. You know what it sounded like to me. It was reminiscent of. Mm. I think if I'm not missing with the the next song. There he go. Um, I don't know if it's this or the next one, but it's like kind of that bugle boy, whatever. Yes. That's what it reminded me of. <laughs> and I don't like that, so. Oh. So I'm not gonna like that because I just don't like that style of music. You didn't like Bugle Boy, uh, the, uh, hip, uh, what was that? Involved he in? was a sexy lover boy. <laughs> I, don't I, not. I don't enjoy that style particularly. It, once in a blue moon, it works for me, but not in those cases. I like Bette Midler's Bugle Boy song. I like that. I do too. Yeah, if I, I, I guess if I hear that, I want to hear that type of singer doing that. Right. Got okay. You know? This song to be. I do enjoy me some Bat now, but go ahead. Yeah, Bat is the original. It's true. She was one of the. She was one of the OGs. People think that Bat Miller was just about blazers and looking at a distance. No, she was doing what Gaga was doing. You better. You bet. Wearing and what? suits and cussing at the audience and singing in bathhouses and singing with uh, Jennifer Lewis and them. And and, and and Luther and Peggy Bundy. Hello. Yes. They better act like they know. They better act like they know. But back to true to me. This song to me was like, the lyrics was very inspiring. Like, if you listen to the lyrics, it was very inspiring. But uh -huh. to me, I think they probably want to put this in a movie or something to me. It felt okay. like one of them 90s movies they want to throw this in. And it felt like Michael Jackson pushed for this record to okay. me. This could have been on like his history album for real. Okay. And that's what I felt. And I was just like, y'all just gave me the fruit of life. And then this. Yeah. No. No, no, no. Can I get with it? I get it all legit. And then, and then, and then. But you like, but you like past the loving though. I true to me, baby. But, but make it make sense. But, but. I heard it a lot while I was playing NBA jams. That was the reason. So of course I'm gonna end up falling in love with it. Oh, okay. You see what I'm saying? But true to me, mm -mm. no. I liked it. Well, bless you. Like, it wasn't offensive to me. It's not like I'm like, oh my god, it's the worst song I ever heard. It's oh, not. No. It's not like on. It's just. <laughs> it feels fillery like, to me. Okay. He was like, making the history album. Like, it's, 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 like they Brandon. needed one or two more songs to hit the cut and real floor. Because they have so many strong songs. Mm -hmm. Right. Like, right. Right. Ridiculously level, high level songs. Like, right. Right. For the most part. So because Michael probably heard it was like, well, we maybe need one more song. It's a little fun. 
Yeah, just a little fun. Let it be inspirational, but You're singing a lot. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, yes. So I was just like, okay. I mean, it wasn't. The album didn't need it. It didn't. I, that's what I felt. I okay. felt like, okay, it's it's cool, but you know. Okay. If we go to wipe it up. Okay, so this is to me. Okay. Wipe it up is the quint the, the typical. It, when you hear it, you're like, "Oh, this is so '90s." Yep. This is the baggy jeans, and they doing this in the video, and they, yep. and they the camera. Yep. But I appreciated it because Mimi wrote that beat. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Her vocal was, and her and Maxi were like riding that beat, and I just, I like the bass, the, the how the the bass dances on that. Dun, 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 dun. I just li I like it. It's a jam. It's like. Uh, for me, like all I do on the second album is is the answer to this. Well, the guy that um that uh produced this record, he also helped produce Let It Go for Prince's uh album too. Okay. Mm -hmm. That is a cut right That's there. That. I knew that one. Love that that song there. I love that song. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good ass song, especially. And, and it fit the '90s, but it but it had its own little yeah, yeah. I Just, agree. I agree with Timothy too. This was a, like one of those songs that was very street like. It kind of reminded you of like SWV Black Pudding. It was like it skates pumping. It was like you know CLC the way that I like them. Like it was that. It was like you had to have one. You know what I mean? And this one was Brownstone's like street record. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like it was like dun, 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 dun. Yeah, it was just like oh. Yeah, it was like they street joint. On the right speakers, you'd be like I okay. Right, right, right. Oh, right. It, okay. it, it, it's it may be crossing the corny line, but it's it's, it's still like yeah, okay. like it's like I, right, I, right, I could do it. Up on it a little bit, I. Right. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm <laughs> gonna do a lot of adjustments, but in the words of our good brother, good, good brother, Neltron. Uh, uh, don't you do that? No, I, uh, I knew it. I yeah. was waiting. Go ahead, do it. Do Those it. Those two songs get skipped for me. Neltron, how and, this, and this is for some, but when this came out, I had. Columbia House CD, and I <laughs> even back then, because I ran the hell out of this album. Like I love, like as a whole, I love this album. But when I would play it, that's where I would skip. At least I, I have a question. Remember when you could program CDs and you could like, yeah, maybe you could just program the tracks and it would just go. Oh, anyway, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you. That no, yes! no, no, no. That's, oh that's a great memory, it actually. Is. It yeah. Is. But that would just be the ones. But I will also blame it on, and this is a, this is a good problem to have. These songs before it just was so strong, back to back to back. Like it was just like, if you don't top that, that, do you know how hard it is to surpass tracks one through six? <laughs> <laughs> right. True. True. Yeah. That is quite a six song run on an album. Yeah. 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 They did ugh, they kept hitting you. Ugh, ugh. You just like That's, wow. Wow. That is ridiculous. Yeah. Oh yeah. 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 Like did this I don't know how it was split up side A and B if it was released on cassette, but that side A was a monster. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah, but anyway. <laughs> Mass. I love it. They, well, shit, for me, they ended this album very well for me because yeah. these are my two favorites, period. Deary Feelings, Ooh La La. Ooh. Julia had a Romeo. Oh, me, me. Listen, listen, listen. <laughs> that song is almost deceptively amazing. Like, you like listen Ooh. to it and it kind of has a simplicity to it. Yes. And then you're like, oh no, it's the simplicity because they're that good vocally. Yeah. 
But like they're doing difficult things very effortlessly. Yep. But the way Brownstone gets you in this record, the I know. Beginning, they sound so smooth, and then they come in and go bam, like show me your own. Yes. They I was like, oh, gather. Oh, they gather all your edges, like all of them. Give me that. The harmonies are so soft <laughs> and smooth and sweet. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then the mass choir comes out of nowhere. <laughs> Very LaBelle. Very LaBelle. That classic. Like yeah. going Shiva is like that. It starts off real sensual and then they just they just start going in. Yep. Going down makes me shiver. And Maxi sounded good. Maxi. She brought me back to I Can't Tell You Why. Maxie, man, she was the, I called her the the, the quiet powerhouse because she was real low-key in her demeanor. But when she opened that mouth, it was like, oh. Yes. And all three were lead singers, just to clarify, because people, you know, yeah. all three of those girls sang lead. And I know we're talking about the, the debut, though. But I love when Maxie, when they would do Five Miles to Empty and Maxie would start it off. Ooh. And how she will end it. <laughs> Not like the record. She Live. would just go up. Yes. And I'm like, oh. Maxie was no joke. She, again, yes. Rest in peace, Maxie, man. Oh, my God, man. That woman knew she could sing a thing. She was real quiet with it, like, okay. Because everybody you thinking is Nikki. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Everybody is looking at Nikki like, oh, she. But when Maxie opened her mouth. It was like, oh. Oh, really? They, she let y'all know if you love me. Like, okay, watch this. Hold on. Pull my braids back real quick. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And then yeah. Mimi was like, oh, y'all think I was just doing the back? Well, I got my little part in Grapevine. How about that? <laughs> and I'm 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 holding down the soprano. I'm holding it down. <laughs> like, you know what I'm saying? Like okay. man, it was some yeah. singing women, yo. Put more respect on these sopranos' name, man. Yeah, I'm gonna get I wanna get into that too a little bit with Brownstone, just a little bit. But yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So they end the album with my favorite record. This is my favorite mm -hmm. song on the album, Half of You. It was one take and it was live. One take, live. The rawness of this. They that's, sang that. That's what got me. You remember on Video Soul Jr. They that they began the show that way. Yes. And, and yes. They, oh, he, is it on YouTube? Because I've been no. trying to find it. I wish it was. I was oh. on you because uh, yeah, they they started the show with them standing around the mic. Yeah. I mean. Piano and they were singing, just singing. Just singing. I do yep. remember that. Oh, oh my God, yo. And, yep. and, and, them to, and for them to do that, because see, uh, and that's why I was telling Lisa before this, I saw all of that, but I didn't get the album until 96. Oh, wow. So I knew the singles, and I knew that song, because I've never forgot it, because I was like, they are standing around this piano singing. What is this song called? Yeah. And then when I heard this, I said, yo, that was it. I was yeah. like, that was it. And yeah. yo, the rawness of Gordon Chambers and Mimi, I mean, I mean, and, and uh, Nikki. Nikki. Listen, them two going back and forth like yeah. that. And it was just like, and then for, Mimi and, and Maxie just to come in with the backgrounds and it was what? just it was just raw, yo. And I was like, who is singing like this? Real vocals. Real yes. right. So, so one night I was coming in uh -huh. was talking uh with my friends one night. Uh -huh. And uh yeah, at least this was about two weeks ago with uh -huh. that story that I told you about that foolishness when I went over to my friend's spot and our friend was over there and some foolishness happened. But okay. I ended up coming and I turned this on the speakers and I recorded myself and posted this shit on Instagram. 
Oh. And Gordon Chambers actually reposted it. Oh, for real? Yes, and he was like, this made me smile, y'all. I was in it. Gordon. Red Cup was shaking. <laughs> Red Cup was shaking. Oh, I'll go. Yeah, I'll tell you about that off here. Okay. But, Y'all, well, yeah. y'all see what I got to deal with? Y'all pray my strength in the Lord. Thank you. Amen. Amen. Glory to God and all hallelujahs and all that. But. <laughs> Shout out to but, Gordon, man. Yeah, man. And so, him and Nikki obviously have a chemistry. You just can't, you can't deny it. You know what yeah. I mean? I mean, if you love me, half of you, like. Yeah. It was a chemistry there. Like, it was so, like, this is my favorite, favorite Ooh. joint. And yeah. and when Nikki says, Sharon just won't do. Mm. She like, I'm not sharing you. Right. Ooh. I'm not sharing. Baby. Mm. It was like, you felt that in the depths of her soul, y'all. Like, <laughs> son, like, this song to me, I was like, you in the album off this? I want more. Like, I want more of this. You know what I mean? Like, I want more of this. Like, yeah. ain't nobody ending no album off with this. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like, it was just like, <laughs> oh, my God. And this was, it, it. to me, this is an example that I feel like we need the gospel vocals in mainstream today. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because a lot of people can't even do that live. And like you said, Timothy, this was one take one live. Take. One and that's take. it. They were sitting around the piano just singing. Yep. And we don't even get that anymore. We don't nope. get nobody going on video soul standing around the piano and singing. Well, ain't no, a, a, ain't no video soul. Uh, ain't no, you right. What shows they gonna go on, baby? The Shindellas. When they try to do their joint on Instagram, and I mean try. The Shindellas could do that. Ooh. Yeah. They, they could do, they could stand around a, no, it, and it's, kill it. No, I, I can name you quite a number of people that could do it, but but there's no established platform for that. They have to create their own platform. That's my point. Right. You're right. You're right. You're absolutely right. Yeah. Like, so I got to be an artist, and I got to be a content creator, and I got to be a producer, and I got to do this, and I got to do that with no money. You do the Speaking math. again, like I always say, we need platforms like that. We need another video so, but make it current. You need, that's how you bridge the gap. That's how they were able to bridge the gap for the newer to, yep. you know, the classic. Like, that's why they added Sherry Carter to Donnie. It yep. added some new flair to it. You know what I'm saying? And that's what we need now. We don't have those so we can have our artists speak and we get to know them and get introduced to them. Instagram and Twitter and all that shit ain't enough. Right. Especially for R&B like this. Yeah. That's why we were winning back then. Because we had so video, so video LP. You had Freaking Team Summit. You had Planet Soul Train. <laughs> Planet Groove. Planet Groove. You had all of these. So people were able, and this is a time, y'all, when albums wasn't going number one, but it didn't matter. Right. It didn't matter. It did not matter because nope. we had oh. platforms where people can go on and display their talent and be like, oh, wait, I'm going to go to that. I'm yeah. going to go to Columbia House and put somebody else's mama name so I can get a CD. No stand culture, no nothing. Nothing. We didn't appreciate Planet Groove either because she had full out concerts on her show. That's true. That's like very true. She let Erica come on there, Maxwell, Brownstone. Brownstone did a whole show. Like, it was... She's player. Play, oh, play, oh, player. Another talented. All them. See, we yeah. need more platforms like that. The yeah. powers that be, hello, but who right. am I? But some yeah. little, me and Elise and, and, and Timogen, our platforms, we just little people that they're watching, but I'm, I ain't even gonna go there. You know what? <laughs> well, no, it's not... It, it, it's it's not even so much people copying what the small people doing. It, they just not doing it. Period. Yeah, it's just not a thing. Yeah, yeah. like and that's shit. What hurts us. Even for, even the pop music don't have it because they used to have their TRLs and all of that. All that's gone too. That's so yeah. true. It's not even just an R and B thing, really. Yeah. It's just a yeah. music thing. There's you know, occasionally you get you know, 
a smaller group do get to kind of blow up off like a tiny desk. Like we have that and they put a lot of black artists on that. So like yeah. it's some little pockets of things, but it's not the it used to be pervasive. Like it was right. that's just what it was. Yeah. That's true. And every artist know, oh, I gotta stop through here, 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 and here. If yep, I want right. if I want to do something with this album. Absolutely. Right. True. And not just the little people, the stars, like they knew they had to hit. That's true. They wanted to move some numbers. And the That's real. Time. That's real. So you gotta come to the to the Black Award show. You gotta you gotta still attend the Soul Train Awards and the those BT and stuff. You got to when you get some some establishment, you know, small and bigger artists you need to continuously go to those shows. Exactly. No. Oh, okay. I mean, you right. Like, that's, that's, and that's how we were ending up shining. You yeah. know what I mean? Like, it was just, y'all, we used to want to run home to see Planet Groove. We wanted yeah. to run home to see Video Soul. We wanted to run home to see, oh, somebody doing an interview with Donnie. Who he talking to? You yeah. know what I'm saying? We wanted that. We wanted that. And now, we don't even have that no more. You know what I mean? And I think I think it's needed, especially for us. And we need people that really understand the culture and understand what we need to be mm -hmm. in them rooms talking to these. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Because I, to me, I feel like like with Rap City, they're trying to redo it. You're not gonna connect with these. You have to find a way to connect to both for it to work. Yeah, I agree. Like, that's why they didn't came with 106 and Park. It ended up working because they added the internet into it. They added that, and they added, like, young shit in it. And that's miss, how you do it. I miss the original. I miss the original on 106 and Park. Well, we all do. They, they AJ and Free were youthful, but they were they had a maturity to them. Like, they yes. could still Whitney, but then they could talk to a Method Man or the mm -hmm. artist of uh, you know, it was it, yeah, man. Also, were trained professionals though already. They was already in they they that was already their craft. So it mm -hmm. wasn't like they were just bringing a talking head. It was somebody who was in the culture and in the know and trained within the industry. And, you know, right? Yeah. So that was the difference. Yeah, I agree. I yep, agree. I absolutely agree. I um. Cause after they was gone and they was bringing the celebrity host, that's when that shit went down. Yeah, because they they were just people they had on there because they were famous. Yeah, not because they were journalists or budding journalists. And since you know what that showed too, you feel like yeah, you 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 hot and you feel like you the best thing. But then when you go and try to do a show, ain't nobody watching. Right, it just goes to show that you ain't big as you think you are. You yeah. thinking, oh, I'm the host of this. I'm going to bring people in and ain't nobody watching. No one's not watching. a journalist. Leave it to the people that is about this life. Yeah. You just be the artist. That's it. Yep. You answer the interview questions. Don't yep. interview another artist. It's not believable. That's right. the problem. It yep. wasn't believable. So, yep. man, I'm going all day on this. But... <laughs> when it comes to Brownstone, do y'all think this is their best album? I have my well, yeah. Do you asking me? You want me to go? Yeah, yeah. No, nah, I'm asking both of y'all. Yeah, that's, that's a great. This a great segue into this because I wanted to make an honorable mention. Okay, I want to like give my bouquet of flowers to Miss Kina Cosper. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. for one, it ain't easy replacing someone in an established group that's going up the charts. Right. And that with Brownstone specific, she had to hold down that soprano. Kina is a phenomenal singer. Yeah. And do it in front of the world and try to fit in and blend and give the people what they expect. And just my honest opinion, I don't think Kina current current day gets, gets the credit in the flowers that she deserves. She's not really mentioned because people just speaking of the second album, People go up for five miles to empty, and they they some people think it's the original lineup, but I'm like, uh uh, Kina Cosper's on that record. You know what I'm saying? I had to I had to say that because she. I agree with it though, and it's great that you did because thinking about it during that era, 
a lot of the performances, she's there. She's there. Like when they did Grapevine on the Soul Train, that's her. That's her. When they did If You Love Me on, and they did the remix with Craig Mack, who's coming in singing? Her. Her. When they on the Apollo, and they're her. doing I Can't Tell You Why and Grapevine, it's Kena. <laughs> it's Kena. So you can't kind of miss her out of the era at all. When this yep. whole from the bottom up era, you can't miss Keita. You know right. what I mean? You got to add her in it because she kept this going because Mimi left. So yep. it was like, okay, you coming in, you got to bring it to it. She did. He brought it. And that second album, she was singing all over her her cover of If You Play a Cards Right. Listen, when I heard that on the radio WBLS, that's when they would, prom they would promote albums at night. I should stay up, have sleep. They, you know how sometimes they would come off a commercial and just segue into the song. Yeah. At first, I was like, the Shaka Khan got a new song out? I, I wasn't too sure. I, like, I, I, I didn't know who it was. Was it a, like, I was like, was it Vest? I didn't know. And then the guy was like, this is a new one from Brownstone. And I was like, and I'm thinking, that ain't Nikki. That ain't Maxi. I was like, oh, that's Keena singing. Mm -hmm. That girl delivered. And I just mm -hmm. wanted to give her her flowers and her Understandable. love. Understandable. Respect. Because Brownstone sound did not change. <laughs> mm -hmm. actually, that's just my opinion. I mean, shit, when she came in and like we said, she did them live performances, it was like, you you recognize Mimi wasn't there, but you really, after a while, didn't really care because it was like, okay, she, she was in doing the damn thing too. So, <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? So, oh, yeah. Shout out to Kina Caspa. Yes. So do y'all, I mean, so do you think this is their best or you think the second one is? I think they both, they just were both two really great R&B records. Mm -hmm. And I think that they just, they delivered. Like Brownstone was like, all right, we're going to continue to give y'all these vocals. And the thing is, the leads were shared more on the second record. So you got like a little more of, of a, they evolved a little bit. Yeah. Keena out the, out the pocket. She was the first one you heard. It was like, oh, so yeah, five miles to empty and shoot, that's man. What you say, JR? Them drums, them drums. Listen here, <laughs> boom, boom, man. But oh <laughs> my god. But yeah, I for real. But with this, to me, this, my opinion, I think for me, this is my favorite out of the both. Okay, this, like this is my favorite. Like this joint is so ill to me. Like mm -hmm. just maybe two songs and I'm just not, I'm gonna be like, all right, I, I give a little, little fever. Like you told me one time I can go take an aspirin, but it's cool. But um <laughs> again, the act oh yeah, oh yeah. I I you good with your comebacks. You you yeah. But uh I for me, I, I love it. Like I this is one that I really go back to. Yeah. I go back to this one often, like for real, for real. Like if you look at my top. 100 songs, five of these songs. I did, I did the bruh man. I did the five. Yeah. Yeah, you beat me to it. I seen that. Yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah. Five of these songs, <laughs> five of these songs is in my top 100 of yeah, this and, year alone. And the, the second record, unfortunately, MJJ Music was folding and yeah. Brown's to work group for a hot second. And then uh, the group disbanded. They disbanded. So it was like between the label shuffle and yeah. the time, still climbing didn't get its just due because you play it now. You're like, oh, wow, this was good. Okay. It is. It is. It's a great, a great album. Though. When we met them, the first one was like, like when we first got introduced and it was nostalgia. And just, like, and they came with different, and they came something different than every other girl group. Because a lot of times there was a lot of girl groups at this time, and yeah. some of them wasn't getting in because it was like they wasn't different. But Brownstone came in like, okay, y'all can do all of that, but we gonna come in, we gonna come in. How I, I how I do Shaka? She came in wailing, girl. wailing on the girls. <laughs> Brownstone came in wailing on the girls, like. They We're sure did down teeth and tongue. That's all you see is teeth, tongue, and and hair. Just this word, going word, yeah. Word. Mm. Mm -hmm. Yes. <laughs> so now we've come to my favorite part of the show. I haven't heard that in a minute. Oh, that felt so good hearing that. 
Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> See, normally you pick on me. Now you're happy. Yes. <laughs> I always pick up, but I haven't heard it in a minute. I'm sorry. I never know JR reaction. That's why you just got to be real. It's just whatever you get is what you get. All right. So today's word song association is going to be some other R&B hits from 1995. Oh. Yes. And so I'm going to give you a song. And you just tell me first thought, emotion, feeling, whatever that comes to mind. Okay. Okay. All right. So we are going to start off with Deborah Cox, Sentimental. <gasps> Ooh. Ooh. Ooh, Elise. You know. Oh, that's how you got to come out swinging. Oh, that hurt my heart because I love it. Deborah D. Cox. V. That's Deborah Cox. V. Deborah Cox. Okay. She's another one. She's respected. She's loved. They they call her for every event because she can sing and she's at the parades and all and she's doing her tours and she. Mm -hmm. Deborah and sentimental. That that whole Janet Jackson all right sort of video. Remember she was it was that's the one she was dancing uh -huh. in the. That was Who Do You Love? Yeah, that's that right. That was Who Do You Love? Because that was Janet oh. Dancers in there, yeah. Okay, 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 okay. Well, Sentimental, I just was like, who is this? Like, it was another one of those things. Like, who is this singer? Like, she yes. got the Whitney, Tony Braxton-ish kind of <laughs> You know what I'm talking about. Like, Deborah yes. Cox. She's 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 like Shantae Moore, like she's up there with that like yeah. creme de la creme. Yeah. Oh, that's right. You do got the single. He got everything. Okay. Okay. Yo, huh? And Dallas, what they did on that man? I'm going crazy. I love mm -hmm. in the days in my heart. It's the things as I go. Even think I'm to think about you. Ooh. That's the only time I am sentimental. Ooh. That is a, oh, I love that song. I that's love my favorite that Deborah Cox song. song. Deborah and is. she got some great songs, but that's, it just that's was number one for me. She got amazing songs, but that, top, that's the one for me. She's mm -hmm. top tier. She is like, don't play with Deborah. Don't play in these, in these streets with her. Mm -hmm. She, oh, her and Shante Moore, Tamia. Yeah. To me, yeah. That can that Canada. That Canada. That, that ilk. Yes. They what oh what a time. Ooh, Tamia. Oh, and wait a minute. It's still time because they all still sound good. Oh. Period. All I'll, of them. I'd go see them. I sure it, would. Tamia and Deborah Cox, Shante Moore. Those what did Shante Moore just do? What did she just do? She went on a soul train and sung for the girls and then put out tour dates. Boom! That's how you do that shit. That's how you promote. Like, oh, in case you forget. Listen. That was a good one, Elise. Ooh! She came out swinging. God damn! <laughs> right in the face. With in your face like a candle. Okay. Um... <laughs> this is fun. Oh. Black Street. Joy. Oh, that's one of my favorites. Oh, wow. Shout out to my little. Shout out to Lee Fi. Yo. <laughs> when I hear that song, I think of Michael Jackson and Stevie. I don't know why. I think yep. it's the, the chord structure and the way he's singing that. That well, song. It was Michael's song. See? And it's. It's such a pure lead vocal oh. on it. It's just so pure. That that is it's, such. It's a, just molasses. Like in the, in the video too, where they sing, they were singing to their daughters, right? Yes. Oh. Yeah. One of my favorite Black Street songs. Damn, Elise. Oh, you you man, she coming out swinging. God damn. I love Ooh. the '90s. Yes. Remember pop up video? Anyway, go ahead. Pop up video. <laughs> oh, I missed that. That was 
That's how I learned just about every genre. I got the word. I got the game in my. I got the game in my closet. Okay. Oh. So we can play that joint. Okay. Well, we need to play that there. All right. Okay. Oh, all right. Okay. Watch it. And that was also the year of Janet Jackson Runaway. Ooh. <laughs> Janet, the blueprint Jackson. The second coming of Michael. Ha! Ha ha ha! I just love him. That song, that oh. song is Summer Breeze, like perfume. I, that song is just so, I, don't, I can't describe it. It's just so fresh. Yeah, it's, yeah, 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 yeah. And I just oh. know we'll have a good time. I didn't hear that. Bad. I didn't hear that note that time. Yeah. And I know we'll have a good time. Yeah. Oh, God. Yo. That was the one. That was the two songs that Jimmy sent to Michael. And Michael picked Scream. Wow. So Janice said, I'll take this one. <laughs> Oh wait, Jr. That's the one with the 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 reference vocal was horrible, and they sent it to Michael because the, the guy who was singing "Runaway" was like he couldn't sing. <clears throat> I heard. I think that's the song. I'm not sure. I I just know that um Thanks. when it was two songs that they sent to Michael. Yeah, and Michael picked "Scream," it's and. Nothing. Janet was like, all right, well, I'll keep running away from myself then. You know what I'm saying? And then that's what she did with it. That video, the dance, ugh. That was letting us know that the Velvet Rope era was coming. Baby. Yes, it was. It let us know, oh, okay. I don't know yeah. what the nose piercings and all that is, but okay. The iconic Janet Jackson, the mm. blue. Yes, yes. Wow, Elise, I fucking love this word association. Keep going. Keep coming, please. All right. I love this. How about I Like by Cut Close? I'm done with this girl. I'm done with you. I'm done with this word association. Like, for real. <laughs> like, Elise, you bringing out bangers like this. <laughs> so, what was the question? Ooh. Oh, no, no, I said, cut close. I, I like. I wasn't a huge fan of that song, but I like I en I liked how mellow and chill it was. It wasn't a bad song at all. I, mm. I mean, that was 95, right? I was I was deep in the stone of the brown. So I was like. <laughs> I know. And it was a lot of heat out. So no. Yeah. Yeah. I was still, you know, some. I was getting into the girls, the choir. So thanks, mm -hmm. Cut It was, but it's a chill song. Like you put it on now, you'd be like, "Oh man, yeah, That's, yeah, yeah." All right, and last but not least, not the last one. And, and we mentioned it earlier in the show briefly, and we got ended with a fun one. Okay, Lena Howard, freak like me. Um, I was I was an innocent boy, and the thing is, I wasn't really checking for that. Catch that! I really wasn't checking for that whole really, really. Uh, hello, yeah. I wasn't really checking for that. Wow. Yeah. Like you know what? No, and I'm not being shady or anything. Like this is the first person to ever say that. That's why I'm like, wow. Like, I wasn't. Look that I saw, and I, I know the song because if they played it, it blew up. But I wasn't checking for that. I wasn't like, oh, I wasn't. Mm -mm. I was like, oh, okay, okay, well, freak like me. What's that? What's that? I ain't mad at you. <laughs> you know, didn't appeal to me, Jr. Come on now, you know the deal. Yeah, <laughs> just about being honest. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right. I call all that, you jerk. <laughs> the song is dope. 
it was now nah, because I don't want nobody. Oh, he trying to no. I, I no, <laughs> no, you're not. No, and you it ain't even got to explain on here because we please. They know the deal. They played that all the time in Brooklyn. You heard that blaring through the cars, like sure. the beat was hard, whatever. But yeah, all I was right. five. So you talking about like that's when Brandy was out. Brandy, yeah. had come best my best friend, and all that baby was killing it at this time. Yeah. Damn, no more at least, just one more. One more? Okay. No, some it it's just so many things in here we talked about. How about I love this. I I go on her on this, but now I'm loving it. I don't want to yeah. <laughs> Ooh, Ooh, Ursher, think of you. Ooh. Mature. I remember when that came out. I was like, okay. I like that song. My favorite Usher song. Look, I know this is your word association, but I have to speak. This? <laughs> yeah. My favorite Usher song till this day. Goes hard. I, I think you told us all about that on the uh I sure did. Episode. Yeah. yeah. I sure did. Thank you for reminding me. I sure forgot. Shout out to Faith Evans, Donnell Jones, and RIP to Chucky Thompson. They ate that song up, and Usher did what he needed to do. It was a little too grown, but he still did his thing on it. And don't you got the single, though? I do, but I'm not reaching down to the used. But no, no, no. I just proven Timmage's point that you have everything. Yeah, I do have that single, though. <laughs> Think of you. That thing went hard. Yes, it do. Oh, that, that thing found so record. That that thing found thick. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah, vinyl. it's a good sounding uh vinyl pressing. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's, oh, show off! Wow. No, I was just saying because sometimes, sometimes the twins can be a little janky. Yeah, you right about that. So, mm -hmm. especially from a certain time period. So yeah, especially yeah. right in that nineties, they they get a little janky. Yeah. Yeah. Crazy because I remember going to Beat Street Records in Brooklyn, right? And I kept buying Brownstones, If You Love Me remix with the, remember the smoothed out version? Yes. Yeah. Copy pressing I got it was warped. Really? Yeah. That's that blue. That's that so blue. You, yeah, that's why I don't, yeah. It's, well, yeah. we thank you for gracing us again with your presence. Yeah. It's always a key. It's it's always a ball. I oh, love hey. it. All the things. Yes, yes. All the things. Thank you for giving it to me, Timothy. Thank you. Yeah. You make us smile and we love it. And you know, we'll continue to cut up in group chats like we do. So yes. 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 As one does. Yes. <laughs> oh, I have to say this before I get out before we get out. I have to shout out to a new subscriber that we have now. From my job, remember? Oh, mm -hmm. yes, Mike. He wants me to shout him out because now he's a fan of us, yo, and he loves what we do, and he's such a fan. And at the job, I tried to be on chill, and he found me, and um, he said, "Yo, y'all crazy, but I love it." What? <laughs> I like y'all crazy, but we love it. So I wanted to give him a little shout out. You know what I mean? Because you know, at work, I try to just be like, you know, to myself and minding my own business. Yeah. But when somebody finds you and they adore and they like what you do, definitely I gotta shout Mike out. So shout out to you, Mike. Respect. What's up, brother. Mike? Respect. What's up Mike? What to do? Yep. <laughs> mm -hmm. My mic sounds nice. Okay. So yeah. <laughs> I like how you did that there. <laughs> But thank you, Timogen, again You're for welcome. joining us. You're welcome. Thank you for having me on your platform. Yes. Love it. And we also would like to thank all our viewers who hang out with us and rock with us every week, sometimes multiple days a week on doing R&B rep things. We appreciate it. Yeah. And subscribe, share, like, tell your folks about us, and mm -hmm. bring us some more cousins. Because we, we family over here. But yeah, um, <laughs> I guess we will just catch y'all on the next catch that. Yeah. Yeah.